Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Today I'm going to be playing with my Dina Wakely acrylic sprays again. I'm going to be making um, six tags and a couple of card fronts. Uh, this is part one of the video. Uh, there will be a part two where we actually take them and complete the tags by putting a focal point as well as um, a phrase or a quote or something on them. Um, these are the products that I'm going to be using, a variety of stencils. Uh, this is Br Bristol cardstock. I did not end up using the press and seal and or saran wrap. I actually meant to grab the saran wrap when I got it and I didn't end up using it uh, anyway, so it, it worked out okay. Cutting down this, uh, she, these two sheets of paper down into quarters. And though I in only retained uh, two of them for actually actual projects, um, the other two I'm using for cleanup just to kind of sop up the paint off of my surface so that I'm not wasting um, as much as I um, as, as much as I can. Between the last time that I used the sprays and this time, I did have some clogging of my nozzles, so I need to figure out what the resolution is for that um, because some of the sprays about three of them, I think, um, they don't spray evenly. So I need to take them apart and see if I can figure out how to loosen up that acrylic paint so that they will function uh, correctly. They do warn you about that. I, I thought I was doing really well with it, but apparently not. So that is the lemon yellow, and then the green is lime. And I did, there's 12 currently in the set, and I did use all 12 colors um, in this video. Really important to shake them up because they are an acrylic paint. And then I am practicing um, cleaning off the nozzle between every spray in terms of I'm done with that color, I'm gonna go ahead and, and clean the nozzle and then move on to the other color. This is the fuchsia and this is one of them that's clogged up and it did not spray correctly. As you can see, it's spraying like a stream rather than a spray as it's intended. So. Again, I'm sure I can Google it and see if anybody's come up with a solution for that. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So this one is, is much lighter than I had intended, but I do go back over it again with um, a few more layers of spray until I get it to the place that I want it to be. And as you can see, I do have a lot of things down um, to protect my surface. Um, these sprays will go everywhere and they are very hard to get off. Um, so I would strongly suggest that you really um, protect your area. I actually even draped it up over the, um, the shelf that holds my camera and my laptop so that it wasn't getting that all, all painted. So. And as you can, I don't know if you can tell just by the spraying, but when you spray one top, one color on top of another, um, the top color will, uh, or the bottom color will resist the top color. So that's what, how you get all these really great designs and, and uh, look on, uh, on the surface. So it's pretty, pretty fun to play with. And in this one, I'm using the three kinds of blue. Uh, I don't know them off the top of my head. They're not in front of me. Uh, one's ocean, one's uh, night, and one is, I can't remember the third one. Um, but I'll be sure and list it, uh, marine. I'll be sure and list all of the um, items that I used in the description box. I'm not sure that I can link up all the stencils just because uh, some of them I've had a long time and I did not write on them where I got them or who the maker is. So, but I will do my best to try to do that. Most of them are probably the crafters workshop. Uh, so I will, I will do a Google search and see if I can find them. So that's two tags down. I really like the blue one. I really like the blue tones. I think it's pretty cool. And I believe this is magenta, which to me, it just looks like a baby pink, but they call it magenta. And then eggplant. Eggplant was another one that got clogged, so um, it sprays all weird too. Not as bad as the fuchsia, but it's not spraying evenly. As you can see, I've got a lot of overspray um, that's creating speckles on the tag. But again, I'm just going to use gravity to my advantage and go ahead and let that those uh, paints run a little bit and see what I get. And this one, I don't remember. Oh, this is, um, this is, 
I'm sorry, I don't remember what that color is. Again, they'll all be listed in the description in the description box. This is another one that's somewhat clogged. So, and this effect worked really, really well. I just dabbed it onto my craft mat, and I really liked what it did with with the um, the design there. It's actually one of my favorites in the end. So there, I'm using one of the card fronts to just sop up some of that paint, um, and I'm going to go ahead and continue to work directly on this surface. Um, in this first round, we're going to just, we're applying the, all of the color, the first, kind of the first layers of color uh, with the sprays, and then I will come back and do some stenciling with some acrylic paint and do some splattering, things like that to finish the, the pieces off. And again, just letting that run um, because I, this is not spraying correctly, so just trying to make the best of it. But this one turned out really good. As you can see, you can see the uh, print of my paper towel, which I love. A uh, very nice surprise. So um, not really a surprise. I know that they do that because I use them all the time, but it was really cool in this case because I wasn't really liking the way that was spraying out. So, and this is, uh, this is I believe, cheddar. So I'm going to go ahead and give a layer of the cheddar. I really like that color much more than I do the lemon. It's a bolder yellow. And I believe that's the fuchsia again. Yep, the problem child. It's not her fault. It's my fault. So I took the lid off, trying to clear the tubing, and I think I don't know if it would help for me to run it under hot water. I'm not sure. So I'm going to be playing with that because they are not not cheap, and I need them to work correctly. So. Um, so be over careful because I was super cautious of this the last time I used them and I still ended up with a problem. So, so there's the fourth one. I really like how that one turned out too. And then one more card front. This one was really pretty. I, I I keep saying they're all my favorites because I, I guess they are in their own way. Um, this one I really liked because I just sprayed the, um, the lemon over the stencil. And then I did come in with some other colors. I, um, I dried it uh, with a heat tool for a little bit here in a moment. Um, but then I also just grabbed a tag and instead of wasting that um, paint, I went ahead and just reversed it onto the tag and was able to use it and create some design on that as well. Um, and again, I did heat, heat set this here in a moment just to speed things up a little bit. Uh, you do want to be super careful using a heat tool near this product because it is acrylic paint, which is essentially plastic, and you don't want to burn burn it or scorch scorch anything. So, um, so here is the, I believe this is teal. So I'm coming in with the same stencil and then the teal color and really, really loved this. Um, the reveal is just incredible. I love the soft colors um, together. And then again, dabbing that off on my tag as well, which the Im impression was really good for just using my fingers there. I was pretty impressed. And I do heat set that again really quick because I want to come in um, and do some other stuff there. So yeah, I'm going to use the honeycomb stencil. Um, I started by... Um, by spraying it and trying to mask off, as you'll see, I'm going to grab a paper towel and mask off part of the design um, so that I'm not spraying on top of the blue part. But I ended up then creating a hard line there where the, uh, the edge of the paper towel is, and I didn't like that. So I end up spraying over the whole thing and then rolling over that with my paper towel roll. And the effect was amazing. I loved it. I was so glad that that accident happened because I wouldn't have discovered this if it had worked out the way that I, the way that I had wanted it to. So see, I'm dabbing it up and it's leaving that fuchsia behind and just creating this beautiful effect of just that, just a t touch of that pink along with the yellow and the teal is just gorgeous. So I was, I was perfectly happy with it. And I'm going to go ahead and um, splatter some of the white acrylic spray uh, onto this design. Creating some splatters. Splatters are always fun. I'm going to go ahead and set that one aside so we can move on to the next thing. 
I think we just have one more tag. I'm starting off with the white, and so this was the next one that has a clogging problem. So I was able to spray it, but it would only depress the, um, the uh, cap about halfway and then it would get stuck. So then I'd pull the cap back up and then I could spray again. So again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on a resolution here, but at least the white looked a worked a little bit better than the other colors. Um, went ahead and splattered some as well. And this one's really cool because when I spray the next color on, you can actually see as it's being sprayed how the white is resisting um, the blue. I believe this is ocean. So see how it's pulling back and it's it's revealing um, those splatters, the white splatters. Pretty, pretty cool. It's an amazing product. Very, very different. Very unusual uh, for, for me. Um, definitely out of the box, but I really, really enjoy them. And just coming in with that little bit of extra paper, sopping up that color so I don't waste it. I will use that for something else. And then here I went ahead and grabbed a piece of uh, parchment slash tissue paper. It's a special parchment paper that is not thick, thick like parchment, but it's not thin like tissue. So it's kind of in the, in the middle of those two. Um, very, very hard to tear once you get this acrylic spray on it. So I start with this lace stencil, I believe from Folk Art, and I'm just going to spray the, the, um, yellow here all over and then the teal I'm not actually going to do anything with these the tissue paper pieces because um, they will more than likely be used in a journal page or something at a later date so I'm not going to be coming back to those but just wanted you to see how it works um, on a larger scale and what it how it responds on the tissue paper or parchment paper and there's that fuchsia again. It turned out okay because it just kind of left spots there, which was actually kind of nice. And there we go. Not too bad. And I should have really left good enough alone there and, and got a different piece of parchment paper rather than spraying over this. Um, but I was just really wanting to play uh, more than anything. Just I've only done, I play, I've used them twice now and um, I really wanted to do it in a more free form where I didn't really have a particular outcome in mind. Um, and that today, that is what this represents is I was just really able to play without um, being too concerned about what I was producing, which is, which is always nice. So the fuchsia, I'm trying to just like move it around with my fingers and hope of, in hopes of having something happen that's good. But you can see how it's mis it's mixing with that blue and making green. Ah. It's just gorgeous. And then I do take my heat tool to this and um, dry it while the stencil's on it, being very careful to not get too close to the stencil because I don't want to melt it. And so after I did that, then I went ahead and laid another piece of parchment slash tissue paper over the top, created a second uh, impression. And even the tissue paper, when it's dry, it almost becomes like plastic. Not hard plastic, but it's got a plastic feel to it. It's very, very durable. And then there we go. There's the second piece. So we're just going to set that aside, and I'll be using those um, in a journal page project or something on down the road. So now I'm going to come back and do some other um, work on these pieces. So I decided to go ahead and use my titanium white um, golden, I believe it's golden paint, um, and using this flower stencil to go ahead and create some design on this piece. So I go up here at the lower right hand corner, the upper left hand corner, and then just a bit on the right hand side. I didn't really like the square edges that it created, as you'll see when I pull the stencil off, and so I do come in with a baby wipe and kind of uh, wipe those away because it is acrylic paint so it is wet and it's on a plastic surface at this point so it wipes off without effort at all. Um, I just didn't like that extra bit that that you're seeing like it it looks messy to me um, so I did kind of rub it out um, and then on some of the other projects I just kind of um, I did it a little bit differently which you'll you'll be able to see it didn't take quite as much effort to clean it up kind of just sponging it. This will make a beautiful card. And 
and this tag. Oh, I just love the color combination of this. So I did go ahead and zap it with my heat tool again because when I picked it up immediately, I could feel that it was still a little bit damp where some of the larger bits of the acrylic um, spray were sticking to the tag. So I wanted to get kind of sponge that off. I'm going to go ahead and use my circle stencil here. And I'm going to be using a medium, medium magenta paint. This is Liquitex Heavy Body. I believe the white is also Liquitex Heavy Body, just as an FYI. And blue is complementary to red, so I thought that this would be a really good combination, and I really liked how it turned out. It was just a pretty subtle, but a nice touch. I have a lot of um, a lot of images already painted out of these girls from Unity Stamps, and so I'll probably just be um, using those that are, I've already painted or colored and make and finishing these tags and cards with those. So that should be pretty cool. And then on this one, this is the one where I tried to do this stencil um, with the spray um, and it didn't turn out. So I decided I'd go ahead and use the stencil again because I really like it. And just using a sponge and that medium magenta heavy body paint and doing my stenciling. And it was gorgeous. Love that effect. And I love that I, I was able to retain that, that teal blue. I just think it was really, it was really beautiful and very complimentary to the other colors. And that one's all done. And then oh, I love this one. I just left it alone. It was so beautiful. This is another favorite. I just love the purple and the pink and how they mixed together. So this one I didn't feel like needed anything much else and so I'm just going to do some white splatters on it and call it good. And then this is the eggplant. So I decided to go ahead and do some splatters with the eggplant as well. Did have a little bit of a hard time getting it to splatter. I'm not sure what that was about so I do try a few times. Just gorgeous, love the colors. And this one, um, I decided to come in again with a complementary color. So I'm gonna use some heavy body paint in dioxazine violet, or dioxiv, uh, I don't know how to say, I call it diox purple. So it's a really, really vibrant dark purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that on this piece because again, uh, purple is complementary to yellow. And so it they just tend to make each other really stand out, which is really beautiful. So I'm gonna do that in the upper, uh, the lower left-hand corner and the upper right-hand corner. And then I'm going to come in with the baby wipe again and just kind of buff out those edges so they don't look so, so um, harsh. And it comes right up because it's acrylic paint. The acrylic paint is still wet while the surface is completely dry. So it was very easy to kind of um, fuss with that a little bit. Love it gorgeous. Decided to go ahead and get my um, acrylic ink out and this is um, also purple. I don't know the formal name. I'll have to look that up for you. I believe it's Daler and Rowney acrylic ink. I'm just doing some purple splatters there. Perfect. So simple and yet beautiful. And then my ocean one, I just love this one. And again, just kind of dabbing it with my with my baby wipe just to get off any excess paint that's still not quite dry. And I'm gonna come in with this dot stencil. It's just kind of lines of dots with the medium magenta um, heavy body paint. Kind of up and down the right hand side there. And then again, on the upper left hand side. Again, I, I think really complementary to each other, the blue and the pink. And 
this one is just gorgeous. Love it. So pretty. I think it's prettier than it than it was when I first did it. So again, I'm going to come in with the opposite of the yellow, which is purple. And purple and yellow, when they're mixed together, will make mud or make brown, a really ugly brown. But when they are used together and they don't mix, they complement each other and they're just super vibrant and very alive, uh, really good combination. Often when I paint a yellow flower, I'll do a purple background and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So there's a close up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll check back for part two. Uh, should have that up in a few days. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care. Bye-bye.